Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, as you can tell from the title, I'm gonna be talking about something that honestly is my biggest insecurity. It's been bothering me since 2016 when the original surgery was. I've kind of strayed away from talking about it just because I didn't really know exactly what happened and I didn't wanna make a video and you know put false information out there about what happened to me. It's gotten to the point where I think that I have a pretty good idea of what's going on. I've talked to a few other transgender girls that had the same procedure as me and experienced some of the same symptoms that I'm experiencing. I personally I personally only know a few people that have the same complications that I experienced. So if you're watching this video and you think that the same thing might have happened to you, feel free to reach out to me, DM me on Instagram, leave a comment down below. I would love to connect with you and, you know, talk about how you've dealt with it, the symptoms that you're having, you know, just the whole thing. But yeah, in this video, I'm going to give you guys the full story. I'm going to start way back in 2016. I'm going to talk about the procedure that I had. I'm going to tell you guys who I went to because honestly, this is my experience and I do not want anybody else to have the same experience that I went through. The doctor that I went through has we'll get into it we'll get into it i'm also going to talk about the steps that i've taken what's helped me what hasn't helped me so yeah if you guys like this video at any point if you like my makeup and you want to see makeup tutorials if you want to you know get to know me anything like that feel free to check out my channel hit the subscribe button give this video a thumbs up all that kind of good stuff but yeah let's get started <laughs> So let's rewind to 2016. I was a freshman in college. I was nine months on hormones and this was my first major surgery. I guess I should probably mention the surgery I had done just so you know we're all on the same page before I continue. I made a vlog about it way back in the day. So if you wanna, you know, see my experience firsthand, I'll put it somewhere, you know, it'll be around. But basically I had my Adam's apple removed. I had my Adam's apple shaved down. In the trans community, in the medical community, this is called a tracheal shave. I think there's a more professional term for it, like a chondrotracheoplasty, something like that. Don't quote me on that. But basically, it was supposed to be a very simple tracheal shave. The surgeon that I went to was Dr. Zikowski in Chicago, Illinois. And like I said, this is all my experience. I'm not trying to slander anyone, bash anyone, you know. It's not any of that kind of stuff. I just want to give you guys my experience. So yeah, honestly, I do not care. Um, I would not recommend going to the surgeon. But yeah, do with that information what you will. So everything leading up to the surgery seemed fine. He seemed experienced. He seemed pretty professional. There were a few things that kind of like we're like, did you just say that to me? Like, uh, okay, whatever. Um, but I just kind of brushed them off because honestly it was just a tracheal shape. I was not planning on having any dramatic facial work with him or, you know, having him do any other thing besides just my Adam's apple. And my perception was that a tracheal shape was something that was relatively simple and easy to do. At the time I was living in Chicago for school and he was relatively close by. So he's the surgeon that I ended up going to. I don't really remember like right after surgery, like that day, but I can tell you that the next day, you can even like look back in my video, you'll see I talked to the camera, my voice was shot. Like it was so hoarse, it was deep, it was like, it was just awful, it was, sounded so bad. Today is day three, wait, day two. It's Thursday, I had surgery on Tuesday, you figure it out. At that point I was like, okay, well, I had stuff shoved down my throat, you know, I did have a lot of work on my throat, and I also had electrology done on my face at the same time, so I thought, you know, okay, I'm just swollen, uh, my vocal cords might be swollen, you know, my whole throat is swollen. It makes sense why my voice is a little hoarse right now. I decided not to worry about it. I decided to just, you know, trust my surgeon and continue on healing. I did bring up my concerns to my doctor immediately. Not only did he hear my voice, but I told him, this is not my voice, obviously. Is this gonna go away? Is this normal? He assured me that it was normal. He, you know, he claimed that my vocal cords were swollen and that my throat was swollen and everything has moved around, so things are different. So, of course, your voice is gonna be swollen. And I was like, okay, that makes sense, whatever, as long as my voice comes back. I wanna say about two weeks after the surgery, my speaking voice did improve a lot. It was relatively back to where it was before surgery. It did feel a lot more tense and a lot more tight, and also swallowing felt kind of strange for some reason. I thought that it was just because muscles had been moved around, things in there were different. I had just gone through this surgery, so I didn't really know. I thought it was normal. While my speaking voice was relatively back to normal, my singing voice, <laughs> I'm not gonna claim that I'm like some great singer or anything, but I sing a lot. I sing all the time just for fun. Um, and I s used to sing in upper registers almost exclusively just because like, I don't know, I just thought it was just fun, you know? After I had surgery with him, I could not even bring my singing voice to a falsetto like range. I couldn't switch into that head voice at all. Like it felt like something was stuck. You know how when you raise your pitch, you can almost feel your larynx lifting and things going up higher in your throat. It felt like something was blocking my larynx from moving up and not allowing it to get higher up to accommodate for those higher pitches. I do wanna to briefly touch on some of the ways that this has been impacting my life. Obviously, like I said, it has minimally affected my speaking voice, but 
it has still affected it. In terms of my speaking voice, I feel like it's mostly affected my confidence. I have a lot of anxiety when it comes to my voice now. As for my singing voice, for a long time I accepted that it was gone. I just accepted that these were the consequences of, you know, the surgery that I chose to do. It also was causing me a lot of pain. Not being able to reach the upper register or move my larynx around really has caused my extrinsic muscles to overact tremendously. I talked about it a few videos back. I have extreme muscle tension in my throat now to the point where it's like it hurts. Like it's sore throughout the day. It's sore almost 24 seven. I also get extremely fatigued and sore from speaking for too long. Like a lot of times after I'm done filming a video, I can't talk for a few hours because I'm just so like sore and exhausted. Another symptom that's really bothered me is the fact that it's kind of caused a swallowing deformity. If you know anything about the anatomy of your neck, when you swallow, your larynx moves up and then it moves down. Ever since I've had this surgery, it feels as though I get halfway through a swallow and then it kind of just like gives up. It kind of like farts out. I notice it a lot when I'm eating. I kind of have to like put my head down to accommodate for the tension in my throat or whatever's happening in my throat. I thought for a long time that it was muscle tension, that maybe he had tightened some muscles and you know, they were kind of restricting right here and not allowing for things to move around appropriately. I also was really, really nervous that my vocal cords were damaged. Well, I don't really know, you know, the technical terms, but I didn't know if maybe there was a bump on my vocal cord that was, you know, not allowing them to vibrate correctly and not allowing me to access that upper range. About a year ago, I brought it up to my primary care practitioner because I thought that there was something seriously wrong with me. I thought that I had like some sort of growth in my throat or on my vocal cords that was progressively getting worse. Looking back, I think that that pain and that lump in the throat feeling mostly had to do with my overactive extrinsic muscles. But again, I truly feel like the muscle tension that I'm experiencing in my throat is like a secondary response. I truly feel like it's a result of what happened to me during that surgery. Like I said, I brought it up to my primary care practitioner and she was able to refer me to a voice and speech center that specializes on vocal cords and um, you know, all that kind of stuff. I made an appointment with them and was able to get a laryngoscopy done and they looked down at my vocal cords and they didn't find anything wrong. Um, they said that they looked perfectly healthy, that they were vibrating normally, and they didn't see anything that would obstruct me from being able to reach those higher pitches. Their conclusion was that I had MTD, which is muscle tension dysphonia, which is basically when your voice is restricted or strained or hoarse or any of those kind of things due to muscle tension around your neck. They told me that the best way to handle it would be to do some speech therapy. I went maybe once a month, like it wasn't like a weekly thing or anything like that, but she gave me exercises and techniques to stretch out the muscles around my neck and to sing in a way that wouldn't use these muscles that were completely unnecessary. And these techniques and these exercises did help. The reason that those exercises helped me was because I am experiencing severe muscle tension. I feel like the muscle tension is really just a symptom of, like I said, what happened to me during that surgery. I'm like, <sighs> but yeah, that is honestly how I feel about it. So after I finished with those physical therapy sessions, I was still experiencing a lot of those problems that I had originally claimed that I was experiencing. And you might even be able to tell that in my videos over the past four years, my voice was always so strained and so tight. I used to talk in a very airy kind of breathy way to keep it all very soft and very quiet because this problem really doesn't just affect the pitch. It affects how loud I can be, how much power I can put behind my voice. It's a whole mess. I stopped doing the speech therapy probably six or seven, maybe eight months ago, and I've still really been struggling with these issues. So I took it upon myself to do a little bit more research and see if there was anybody else that was experiencing the same thing as me. Basically what I found was a lot of patients that had had this done a little bit lower on their neck were experiencing the same problems as me for whatever reason. I started Googling, researching, doing all that kind of stuff, looking into trans forums, looking into other, you know, tracheal surgery forums, all this kind of stuff. And eventually I found something called tracheal dermal adhesion. This is when the scar tissue or the skin underneath the incision sticks to the larynx or sticks to your trachea and kind of like fuses together. This makes a lot of sense in my case because like I said, since my surgery, my larynx has kind of felt very restricted and felt like it can't really move up into those same place. I'm like, it can't move up into the same place that it used to be able to move up to. I found a case study from people with tracheostomies. In this case study, they found that a lot of people were experiencing this tracheal dermal adhesion and they provided this diagram or this little visual as to what was happening to them. You can see the trachea side where there's bone and then you can see this little wall where it's kind of like attached with like a little bit of tissue 
tissue or looks like kind of like a like a rope or something that rope is scar tissue and as you can see from the second half of the visual when the person goes to swallow that scar tissue is restricting the trachea from moving and causing a swallowing deformity it's kind of like making me really excited because people that had this happen to them they were able to have surgery again and have this scar tissue kind of excised or removed or you know have their trachea freed up to where they were able to swallow more regularly again i'm talking with my hands so much and just so excited but they had really really great success in fixing the issues that they were experiencing i posted on like a trans facebook group for ffs and asked if anybody else had experienced this kind of thing where their voice box kind of felt stuck to their skin and i got a few replies one of the replies was from a girl who also went to Dr. Zukowski and was experiencing the same exact thing as me. She told me that she got super fatigued from talking for too long, um, that her upper register was very limited, all the same things that I was experiencing, but she said that she didn't know what to do. She said she had gone to ENTs and the same people, you know, that I had gone to, and they had told her the same thing, that there was nothing wrong. However, another person that answered me told me that they also had a tracheal shave done, and they were one of the people that had the incision done too low. And so they developed this tracheal dermal adhesion right underneath their scar. They sent me a video of them swallowing. <laughs> it sounds kind of funny. They sent me a video of them trying to swallow before they had it corrected. And you can clearly see that their skin is stuck to their trachea and being pulled up and down every time they swallow. I'm gonna insert a little video. This is actually me. So as you can tell, when I try to raise my larynx, which is what happens when you sing into upper pitches or when you swallow, you can see that right underneath where my incision is, it's kind of stuck to underneath my chin and it's being pulled up every time I raise up my larynx. To me, that kind of just proves that I have tracheal dermal adhesion. When you hold the very surface layers of your skin, you should not feel tugging or pulling at all when you swallow. They should not have any sort of connection between them. Your larynx should really be able to move freely underneath, and that's just not the case for me. I contacted my primary care doctor again, and she was able to refer me to a otolaryngologist surgeon. I don't know if that word was right. Don't judge me if it's not, but she was able to refer me to somebody that specializes in like throat surgeries and corrective swallowing surgeries that kind of stuff so i'm very very hopeful that something will be able to be done about this if i do get surgery to fix this you can bet that i will be making a video about it because it was so hard for me to find any sort of research about this or any sort of you know conversation about this like i said for so long i just kind of accepted that this was you know my life that this was my reality that these were the consequences that i was going to have to live with but at this point i feel like there's a little bit of hope left you know like I said, if you guys have experienced anything like I'm experiencing, please let me know. I would love to talk. I would love to chat and, you know, see if we have similar experiences or anything like that. If you guys like this video, if you found it helpful or informative at all, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. It really does help out my channel a lot. Also, subscribe if you are not already and you would like to be. Ring the little bell so that you get notified when I post a new video. And yeah, other than that, I think I'm going to go. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.